Hey, Nick the Hitch Guy here. Uh, today I'm going to do a comparison between the Polarite Super Glide and the Anderson Ultimate. One of the questions I get all the time is uh, customers that are looking to outfit their short bed truck with a fifth wheel hitch and they're considering these two options. Now, they're somewhat different products, obviously. The Super Glide f installs onto industry standard rails or you can get an OE puck mounted version that fits into a truck with a fifth wheel prep package. And it does utilize four points of connection between the truck and the, the truck frame and the uh, fifth wheel hitch. Whereas the Anderson Ultimate, this particular one is their gooseneck uh, ball mounted product. It's designed to fit onto nothing more than a gooseneck ball in the bed of your truck. Now, if your truck has a fifth wheel prep package, you could use both of these products. You could use an OE version of the Super Glide, or you can install a, a OE ball that drops into that center pocket and then install this um, Anderson Ultimate fifth wheel hitch right on top of that ball. Both of these would be able to be installed in your six and a half foot bed and they would tow your trailer from point A to point B. The big question though is how much turning clearance radius, um, what kind of concerns are you going to have? Because ultimately with a short bed truck, when you're towing, that trailer's going to, at a certain point in, at a, at a certain point in turn, the trailer's corner is going to come around and hit the back window of your cab. What the Anderson does is it offsets the hitch back or creates additional clearance by taking the connection point from the truck and the connection point to the trailer and actually offsetting them by several inches. Whereas the Super Glide creates that additional clearance by turning and sliding with that trailer as you turn. So it actually moves the trailer back. Both of these products are going to create or have the ability to create additional clearance in a short bed truck but how much and is it going to be enough for you? So what we're going to do today is going to install both of these products into this short bed F350, and we're going to hook up to a Grand Design Reflection and tow it around a little bit and show you what kind of clearance you can expect from the Anderson Ultimate, and then what kind of clearance you can expect from a Polarite Super Glide. That way you can make a better decision on what the best product is for you. All right, first of all, we're going to put the Anderson here in the bed of the truck. One thing to take note of is we're working with a aftermarket gooseneck ball in this and it's pretty important to know, or not necessarily know, but consider where that ball is located or how far from the cab because that does change from vehicle to vehicle. On a Ford F-350 like this, this aftermarket gooseneck ball is going to be a kind of best case scenario on some of the other trucks. The ball can be several inches ahead of the axle, whereas this one's only a couple inches ahead of the axle. If your truck has a fifth wheel prep package, it's probably going to be, the ball's probably going to be an inch further back from this. So that's a, a measurement that is going to, you know, it's gonna have a big uh, bearing on whether you'll be able to make a, a nice tight turn or not, but it's something you need to consider. That ball needs to be as close to the axle as possible to maximize your offset. Now, another thing to take note of here is with the, any single point hitch like this, you will need a goose, or a uh, torque wrench to actually install the hitch onto the gooseneck ball. This one, we're getting the torque wrench set properly. And what that's for is the drawdown bolt here. So while this hitch is lighter, it's only 37 pounds, it does require you to uh, use a torque wrench when you install it every time. So what we're doing is just torquing this down. Anderson says 60 to 70 foot pounds, I believe. So we're gonna go right to 70. Okay, so the hitch is installed on that gooseneck ball. As I tighten it up, it just, you know, cinched it down into the bed. All right, so the hitch is in the bed of the truck. And like I said, we got the adapter onto the trailer's pin box. Now, uh, this piece is actually the latch. It's going to op operate the uh, lock mechanism. So after you hook up, you push it in and it pushes the cable through and actually in theory, if everything's working right, it's gonna push a plunger through and hook onto the ball. Now, we're not going to actually install this onto the bottom of the uh, fiberglass. I don't wanna dr drill through this, so we're just going to leave this in the bed of the truck for now. Um, all I need to do is lower the trailer down on the ball, though, here. Okay, so we have the weight down on the hitch. Uh, last thing we need to do is push this plunger in 
and turn it and that locks it into locks it closed. So now the um, pin is in, hooked to the ball, and we can tow. But mainly what we're going to do is talk about the degree of turn that we can get. Because again, this is a short bed Ford F-350. This is a relatively narrow, so it's 96 inch wide, grand design reflection. Has this pretty steep contour here up on the front corner to keep it away from the cab of the truck. So these are benefits that are working in our favor. Some trailers are 102 inches wide where you're dealing with, with a much wider trailer. That makes, a, um, that makes it an issue when the trailer's coming around, this corner is going to come further forward at a 90 degree turn. So at about 50, 50 to 60 degrees, that starts playing a major role. In this case, we're 96 inches wide, contoured corners, and we're on a F-350. So we have a relatively healthy distance between the cab and the gooseneck ball as it is. So let's uh, go ahead and make a few turns and see how tight we can get between the truck and the trailer. So we have some clearance up here at the corner between the truck and the trailer, but right now we're on really flat level ground. The reality is, is if our trailer was moving downhill a little bit, it's going to change the geometry. Also, if the truck, if the front of the truck were to come up over a speed bump or we hit the curb across the, the, the street from us as we're making that tight turn out, it can easily pitch that corner into the corner of the trailer. So it's difficult to say this is an acceptable degree of turn, but this is roughly about 70 degrees between the truck and the trailer. So you would be able to make a turn, but again, we're on flat level ground, so keep that in mind. Another thing is if you look right there at the back side of the pin box, you can see how we're sitting above the bed sides. Because because we put that adapter on the pin box and essentially brought this back four more inches, now all of a sudden, instead of staying within the confines of the bed, we're sticking up and over it. Now we recommend typically to, to maintain eight inches underneath the bottom of your trailer to the bottom of the, or the top of the bed sides. The same's true for this. This isn't really enough clearance here. Would it get you by for most situations? I think the answer is yes but you would still have some restrictions. This is going to be another pinch point to watch in addition to the cab, but this does give us more clearance than a hitch that doesn't provide any offset. So there's the finished angle between the truck and the trailer, and we could probably go a little bit tighter, but this is all the tighter I feel comfortable going, just because I like to maintain at least a few inches of clearance between the back corner of the truck and the front of the trailer. Uh, right here I would say is, I mean, I'm not very great at this game, but probably 65, somewhere between 60 and 70 degrees. It, I think it would allow you to be, if you were towing forward, you'd be able to get in and out of most places. Where this would become an issue is if, if you got, um, if you were backing into a tighter state park, something like that, this could be, uh, get problematic really fast especially if you weren't on level terrain. As you can see, we're on a, a, you know, a nice concrete surface here that's nice and level. If this ground was uneven, it would definitely make this situation worse. All right, so as I finish pulling this out, one other thing I wanted to make a point of. So when we made that turn, the pin box got a little close to the bed sides here. There's actually been an occasion where we had it off on some uneven ground and uh, rubbed into the bedside there, you can see it. So there is a little bit of a limitation on what kind of angle you can make. The nice thing is with this though, is that you can reverse it on the trailer to now make it to where this goes 
behind the king pin and now you've brought your pin box in. So at a turn, your pin box is further away from the bedside. The downside is, is you bring your trailer forward, which that's going to cripple us when it comes to cab clearance. So that's something to take note of. It can be adjusted, but an adjustment's gonna help you in one way and hurt you in another. All right, we have our super glide installed in the bed, but beforehand we had to install our industry standard rails that the hitch actually fits on. And we've sprayed some WD-40 on the slides that's going to allow the hitch to slide properly. Now, as with the Anderson, how you attach an adapter, with the Super Glide, you're going to attach a capture plate to the bottom side of the pin box. This capture plate's designed specific to the pin box to hug around the front framework. Then the underside offers this wedge that locks into the hitch plate. So we're gonna, going to go ahead and head over to the trailer. Um, this particular trailer has some bolts already in it, so we're going to install a capture plate that looks like this. And then uh, we'll go ahead and go over to the trailer and get the capture plate installed. And the next time we'll be back on, we'll be fully ready to hook up with our Super Glide. We have the capture plate installed on the, or the wedge, capture wedge installed on the bottom of the pin box here. And then we have the uh, Super Glide installed into the bed of the truck, all ready to go. Next thing that we need to do is hook the two up. Now, comparing it to the Anderson, this one hooks up much more like a traditional fifth wheel hitch where we have a kingpin with a jaw that we're going to back the, king, or the hitch plate into the kingpin and the jaw wraps around the, the kingpin. Nice thing about the pull right hitch plate is it's a gear driven latch that swoops around the backside so it provides a nice tight connection between the kingpin and the um, hitch plate. So with that being said, I'll just go ahead and back my truck underneath that uh, pin box. So with the Super Glide, we're connected. We just need to do our safety check, making sure the wedge is inside the hitch plate. And I'm going to make sure the jaw is wrapped around the, the kingpin as well, just to do our safety checks to make sure we're ready to tow. So with that being said, we'll uh, cut back here in just a couple more moments after we get this thing to an angle and show you guys uh, how tight we can turn with the Super Glide in the bed. We've gotten our truck and trailer situated at a little bit over a 90 degree angle here. And a couple of benefits with the Super Glide is that the kingpin stays right at the center line of the truck. So you're not having that offset. So your pin box has a little bit more clearance on your, on your bedside. Additionally, when you come around and, and look at the, look down the side of this truck and the side of the trailer, you're going to easily see that we're at a much tighter angle between the truck and the trailer. Which, if you're coming into a tight campsite, I think that's extremely important to have that additional clearance. Um, I like to go into state parks a lot, me and the family. And when we're backing in, usually it's on a Friday night after I get off of work, we're usually the last people into the campground. Because of that, I don't know where the person's truck is across the, the street from me. Um, it can be very difficult to get into a campsite without being able to at least get to these extremely tight angles. Not to mention when you're on uneven terrain, the extra clearance um, that the Super Glide offers is going to be um, a little bit of extra insurance to know uh, that the back window of that truck's not going to uh, get uh, shattered out on your, on the middle of your, in the middle of your vacation. So with that being said, we're clearly at 90 degrees here, but with the Super Glide. After comparing the Super Glide to the Anderson Ultimate, there's definitely some benefits with having the Anderson Ultimate. It is only a 37 pound fifth wheel hitch. That's really appealing um, to be able to put that hitch in and out of the bed of the truck easily by myself. That's, that's definitely a benefit that the Anderson offers. Um, when you're talking towing with a short bed truck, it's really important though to know that you are going to still have some cab issues or clearances with the Anderson Ultimate. In our situation with our Grand Design Reflection fifth wheel trailer, uh, that's only 96 inches wide. And a lot of toy haulers or even nicer, bigger fifth wheel trailers are 102 inches wide. So because of that, um, sometimes this isn't the best product or you're not going to get nearly as tight of a turn as what we got. Or if the front of your trailer is squared up, that's going to also work against you. So those are things you need to think about before using a pro product like the Anderson Ultimate or the Polarite Superlight. 
which I'll get to that one in just a moment. But when we really look at that short bed truck and knowing that you want to be able to turn and not hit the cab, the Super Glide, in my opinion, is a better product for that short bed application. It's definitely going to give you the clearance that's necessary to make the turns, and it keeps your towing weight directly over the rear axle of the truck, which allows the safest towing performance with the fifth wheel truck and trailer going down the road. Negatives with this product though is it is a 200 pound fifth wheel hitch, so it's going to require you and one other person to lift it up into the bed of the truck. It's not a big deal unless you're planning on taking that hitch in and out quite often. The other thing to keep in mind with the ISR version of the Super Glide or these OE versions, you can pull them in and out without using any tools. Whereas with any of the ball mounted fifth wheel hitches like the Anderson, you're going to have to use a torque wrench to put it in and out of the bed. Now, if you feel like that per, uh, product provides enough clearance for you and you feel like the Anderson is, is ultimately the better way to, for you to go, then there are some other products out there on the marketplace that you should consider. One of them that I would recommend is the Polarite Superlight. It's similar in design in the sense that it's designed to hook to a gooseneck ball and designed to tow a fifth wheel trailer. Uh, that particular one just weighs a little bit more, but what I like about it is that it's SAE uh, tested, which means it's tested to an SAE standard as compared to uh, the Anderson Ultimate, which is not tested to the SAE standard. So with that being said, I think in a short bed truck, the Super Glide is hands down the way to go. It offers unparalleled clearance between the cab of the truck and the front nose of that trailer. So if you don't wanna cause any damage, this is certainly the way to go. If you like the content of this video or you have any other suggestions for fifth wheel hitch comparison videos, go ahead and leave them in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe.